Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Time for another Metal Earth build. This time another automotive build back into the beginning of the American cars, the 1908 Ford Model T. The first automobile mass produced on an assembly line. Some of these thin parts look a little worrisome, but I'm not going to let that stop me. Let's open it up and see what's inside. 1908 Ford Model T. Inside we have two metal sheets and one piece of paper for the instructions. Open this up. It's the tall long ones. Instructions on both sides. So we'll fold it in half and look at the top of the front page where we have our usual Metal Earth 3D laser cut model website where you can see the 360 view, the line drawing. There's a bit here about insertion tabs, fold lines, insertion holes. Neither of those pliers are helpful for assembly. And we have the older style legend where it's just a blue circle. When you see that in the directions at a connection point it means to fold the tab over 90 degrees. If you see a green triangle at a connection point it's telling you to insert and twist the tab. 90 degrees and this tells you as you pull and twist or screw it makes for a better connection. If you can pull it off that's true. Down here we have the layout of the two metal sheets. See if I can find those really quick. Uh, appears to be that one and that one. There you go. It took a second. And this has all the different parts numbered down here and pointing to where they are so you can find them on the sheets for the instructions. And this is an older style direction so there's no color coding for like the wheels that are all probably the same. Over here on this side you've got the start of the assembly flow chart starting with one, two, and three. So we've got some larger sections coming together. Then add four, add five, follow around. Once you get halfway to jump down to the bottom quarter of the page. Picking up with six, seven, eight, nine, ten, coming together for the steering wheel. And you just follow the assembly, follow the arrows. Once you're done with this quarter, you jump over here and you just pick it up. This is like a sub-assembly of what that, you know, you start with this piece, you fold, you fold, you end up with that, add this. And you just, again, follow the arrows at the bottom, you flip to the back. Fold it around the other way. And top left quarter, you pick up the directions in this quarter, and the bottom quarter, and then here you are done. Let's talk tools. I have a pretty standard set of tools that I use in most every build. I have needle nose pliers, I have flat nose pliers, I have flush clippers. These are a must for me. They clip parts off the sheets quickly and cleanly. I have a set of precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one with the pointed end ground down slightly, a flat set with a sort of curved tip, useful for twisting tabs in slightly curved areas. I also have a pretty standard set of tweezers with a flat angled end. These come in one of the Iconics kits and I use them a lot. When it comes to shaping rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. Another option for rounding parts, especially larger parts, is sockets. Maybe you have some sitting around already. Maybe you know someone that will loan you a few. Or maybe just pick up a really cheap set. Got the metal sheets, took a peek at the directions. I've got some basic tools to get started. I can also see that I'm probably going to be using some dowel rods and possibly some sockets to round the wheels and fender wells. But let's get started.
I started like the instructions said, putting part 1, 2, and 3 together, but with just the one tab on either side, I did not want to stay. If I had it to do again, I would attach 5 between 1 and 2 first, then add in 3. A trick I often pull when putting the first few pieces of something together and not having much support to bend tabs, I will twist them lightly to hold things in place. Then after more of the model is together and I feel safe trying to bend tabs, I will go back to the twisted one, straighten them out and bend them over. I missed putting on part 7 here. When shaping the round parts, I like to start with a drill bit or other shaping tool that is a little too large and work my way down.
This video has been edited down. I've not shown all the different attempts, adjustments, or retries of this build. I also clip out parts where I am studying directions, searching for and clipping parts, and sometimes repetitive steps. It may make this kit look like it comes together easier than it did, but there are a lot of bending and adjusting of parts to make things fit. Work slowly, be patient, and take your time. I personally had a lot of difficulty getting these six tabs to line up with their slots. I often use magnets to pick up parts and to keep from losing them, but I think this is the first time I have used the magnets to place a part. I bend the lower tabs of part 25 at 90 degrees so I could just hook them in place and worry with the upper tab.
Sometimes other parts get bent while I'm working on the kit. I often leave them alone until the end of the build or I need to adjust them for another connection. I have found that if I bend it once, I will likely do it again and if I keep straightening it out and bending it, it will more than likely break. Now to straighten out the gear shift I bent some time back. I thought I was finished, but then I realized I forgot parts 7 and 24. 7 was fairly easy to attach, but I had to take part of the bottom frame off to attach 24. The 1908 Model T Ford, it is finished. And it is not a highly complex model. There's not a lot of detail on the bottom, but there is a lot of detail, at least to the pattern of the seats. There's not much going on with the dash. But it's a nice model, it's a nice build. I did have concerns when I first looked at it at all the thin parts on this, and, and I was not disappointed and how tedious it got to be trying to, especially since so many of the tabs were folded over and not twisted, trying to fold those tabs over without accidentally crushing or warping or twisting something else on the car or the entire car. It took about two hours, actually just under two hours for me to build, so that's not too bad. Again, it's fighting with these parts that you're trying to fold these tabs over the first few parts, the way they come together are a bit silly, I, I think. 
If I did it again, I'd put it together slightly differently. I'd probably twist more tabs than I did to hold things together before I went back and later folded them over. It's a medium difficulty build. It doesn't quite have the detail, or it's about along the same lines as the detail for the 65 Mustang. Not quite the detail you see in the Batmobile, so I thought that was pretty interesting, but I'm not disappointed. It'll look nice on the shelf. They always do. Glad to have it done, and I think I will leave it at that. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.